That for me was the moment where I realized I don't have to live in this space. One of the most interesting things that I heard early on about BTS from you all in the comment section was this quote. BTS finds you when you need them most. I don't know where that came from, but it's brilliant and it instantly hit me like a truck. So today, I would like you to share your story in the comments. What a lot of you have these stories of how BTS has affected you, has impacted you, has helped you grow a relationship with somebody else, a, a son, a daughter, a parent, a, a friend. Some of you have gone so far as to say BTS has actually saved your life. Trying to go through all the comments, I, it's, you know I have an addictive personality. I, I can't stop. I'm just, I'm fueled by everything that you all have to say and the knowledge and even just the, the simple aspect that you are sharing bits of your story with me and with everybody else. And then the responses back and forth between you all, it is very clear that this is a family. And it's very clear to me that I am in the right place. So today I just want to briefly share my story of how I know that this is the time that I was supposed to find BTS, that BTS was supposed to find me. In 2017, I lost my dad to cancer. Understandably, I struggled for years. Grief, anxiety, depression. I literally was not myself. It was a very difficult few years. And there were a lot of other things that happened in that time frame. But this version that you see now of me has only recently resurfaced. For years, I literally was not myself. And to hear your loved ones tell you, yeah, you, it's, I mean, you're still you, but you've changed. And knowing that, feeling that, and not knowing how to resolve that is difficult. It's frustrating. For those of you that have struggled or struggled with anxiety, you know that it's like this feeling that you just can't seem to break. I mean, it got to me to the point that it would affect my breathing, that even when I think I'm not stressed, I have a shortness of breath. Something's happening, you know, physically, and I don't know what to do about it. So for those of you that have kind of traveled through the time travel of my channel and seen some of my older videos, you know that I have old series like uh, lens therapy, which is when I used the camera to kind of process through things that I was going through. And the first episode, I guess, that I did of that was about my dad. You know, for six months after he died, I was just completely destroyed. And I was really struggling to function on a daily basis. And I didn't know what to do about that. So I just set up the camera one day and I just started talking. And that helped a little bit, but then turning that into a video that I had to cut and listen to and then move pieces around, it was its own version of therapy for me to continue to kind of process through that event. And that helped greatly. However, that feeling stayed with me for years. And just recently, I did a video about having to step back into the arena because, you know, I'm tired of my weight fluctuating. I'm tired of having no self-confidence and I'm tired of the anxiety. It's time for me to pull up my bootstraps and step into the arena of the gym, essentially, and a healthy lifestyle and take control of my life. And so I'm putting this video together. And in the video, I'm talking about when I lost my dad and how that started this domino effect. And while I'm editing that video, and I'm listening to myself talk about four years ago, this is what happened, and this is much like I am right now. I'm sitting there and I'm editing, and I stop, and I look at myself on the screen, and I think to myself, I am so sick of hearing this story. I'm so sick of living in this space 
where there's this cloud of difficulty around me, this cloud of anxiety. And like, I've gone through therapy and I've tried to process, why don't I feel better? And I kind of came to this conclusion. Bear with me because I tend to think in analogies and metaphors, because again, I'm a visual storyteller kind of guy. When you're lost or depressed or anxious, it's like, it's, it's literally like you're lost. You don't know, you have no direction. You're just kind of going through the motions. And you know you're lost, but then once you feel, once you figure out why you're lost, why you, um, like what caused it, what the catalyst was, that to me is like finding yourself at the bottom of the staircase. You've now identified something's wrong and I think I know what's causing it, but I don't know how to fix it. So bottom of the staircase. When you start to process through that event, for me, it was my dad dying. For I had to go through therapy with a therapist. For me to do that, that is first making the appointment, reaching out to somebody for help is taking that first step onto the staircase. And you want to think that going up, going through therapy or processing through these events will get you to the top, of the, the top of the staircase and then all of a sudden you're fine and everything's okay. But it doesn't work that way. We think that it does. I thought that it did until one day I realized going through therapy, there were all these you know, um, moments where clarity came and oh, I, I, I had this revelation all of a sudden. I feel better, I feel better but you're not at the top of the staircase. Just having the revelation and figuring out why you feel this way, you're still two or three steps from the top of that staircase. It takes you to make a conscious decision to say, okay, I've identified, I understand now what's causing this, but now I have to take that next step. The therapist can't do it for you. Nobody can do it for you. They can help you, they can talk to you, they can listen to you and motivate you and inspire you, but it takes you to take that next step or two steps or three steps to say, I'm not going to feel this way. I'm not going to let this wave of anxiety take my whole life. I'm not gonna let this depression take me. Now, there are moments when you can't help it. It comes and there's nothing you can do about it or at least you feel helpless. So yeah, there are these moments of relapses, but if each time you understand that you have some control over that, and you understand that it is a matter of execution, of taking that step and physically making a conscious decision to progress, to move forward, that for me was the moment where I realized I don't have to live in this space. And it wasn't much longer after that where I decided, you know what? I'm taking control of my life again. I'm not gonna live in this space of sadness and depression and anxiety. I'm gonna look for the good in the world. I'm gonna, I'm gonna be grateful. And it wasn't long after, and I mean like we're talking a few weeks, I uploaded my first BTS Beat Saber video and here I am. And here's the moral of this story. If I, I think, if I had just listened to BTS's music, which I did in, this, in the, the game, I was just uploading what I thought was a cool song and a cool little video of me with some lightsabers. It would have been great music. I would have loved it. I would have, you know, gained a couple albums to my, uh, you know, collection. Great. But I don't think it would have had the same effect that me finding you all and us making this connection, now you have basically come out from everywhere, something like 112 countries or something already, and said, hey, pay attention. And I go, oh, well, what do we got? And just like I said in the other video, you guys have said, hey, listen to this song. Watch this video. Listen to this message that these guys have. And like me watching these videos, I'm not just watching for the entertainment purpose, which is maybe why a lot of people don't get it. They just watch and say, okay, well, these guys are dancers. They're like the Backstreet Boys or they're just a boy band. And we know now that that is not the case. 
So for me to sit here and really focus and watch and try to figure out where the good is, what is all the hype behind these guys, what is it about this message that is resonating so furiously around the planet? So I have to focus on that message and now I see the good. So if anything, I feel like the moral of this, of the moral of my story, and I think what may resonate with a lot of you from what I read in the comments, is that sometimes it really does just take a conscious decision to say, I'm going to be grateful right now, I'm going to be here now, I'm gonna be present, and I'm gonna focus on the good. You will fail sometimes, you will fall down sometimes, but it's a matter of getting back up. And I know that's cliche, I totally get it, but it's cliche because it's, you hear it often, because it makes sense. This is a lot more, this is a lot deeper than I wanted to get into on this video, but I just wanted to share my story and some of the experiences that I've had. And I feel like lessons that I'm learning and you are helping me to reinforce in my everyday life. And I wanna hear your story. I wanna hear how you have overcome. You know I'm reading these comments. This isn't just a ploy for views and comments and I, 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 don't, I don't care about it. If, if my channel right now stayed exactly where it was at whatever subscribers we have and this little family that we have built stayed exactly as it was, we would just keep on trucking. And I would get to know each and every one of you as I have tried to do. I'm learning your names. I'm trying to learn your locations. Or some of you, I know your jobs already. Uh, that's family. And I, uh, I'm going to stop there. I could get all mushy. And I know I will in future videos. But for today, I really just wanted to say thank you. Here's a piece of my story. And now I want to hear yours. I appreciate the knowledge. I appreciate all the tidbits of BTS that you have shared with me, but I want to go a little deeper. Mm -hmm. And if there's anything we know about BTS is that it gets deep.